Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Did you know karate was taught to children from the very beginning? Itosu Anku was always a great supporter of teaching karate to children. He even mentions it in his precepts in 1908. His second precept says, the purpose of karate is to make the muscles and bones hard as rock and to use the hands and legs as spears. If children were to begin training naturally in military prowess while in elementary school, then they would be well suited for military service. Remember the words attributed to the Duke of Wellington after he defeated Napoleon. Today's battle was won on the playing fields of our schools. And his 10th precept says, In the past, many masters of karate have enjoyed long lives. Karate aids in developing the bones and muscles. It helps the digestion as well as the circulation. If karate should be introduced beginning in the elementary schools, then we will produce many men, each capable of defeating 10 assailants. Now, I know his precepts were aimed at convincing the Okinawans and later the Japanese to include karate in the curriculums of their schools by linking it to military benefits, but it ultimately led to the inclusion of our martial arts in elementary education. Now let's fast forward about half a century to the 1970s and you see a very different image. Karate in the Western world had become a martial art mainly pointed at adults, with rather few children practicing it. When the 1980s hit, this would change, because in the 80s, pop culture started hinting that martial arts were great for children. There are many examples of this, going from movies like The Karate Kid or Jean-Claude Van Damme's No Retreat, No Surrender, to series like The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. In the 19s, this continued. Just look at movies like Three Ninjas, etc. or the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. The list goes on, and many karate schools gratefully took advantage of the growing popularity of martial arts with children. This was unfortunately also the time when McDojos multiplied like crazy. But I digress. Today we can hardly imagine a world where karate is not practiced by children. I personally think that is a good thing. Children are our future after all. There are many benefits to teaching children martial arts that repeat or expand upon Itosu's arguments. Uh, these benefits include self-protection, increased concentration and social skills, increased confidence and of course the physical aspect of it. I do want to caution teachers who combine teaching adults with teaching children. Don't teach children the way you would teach adults. Let me explain. It seems obvious when you think about it, but I have experienced that not all karate teachers are aware of the possible pitfalls when teaching kids martial arts. It doesn't just end with don't punch a kid in the face either. Teaching a kid should be well prepared and follow a clear vision. A good teacher knows what he has to teach his class, but a great teacher knows how to make it fun as well as functional. Because even though it seems children are more forgiving than adults when it comes to authority figures, your impact on their lives is much greater. Be patient with your students. You can never know what kind of person your student will grow into, but as their teacher, you have a great influence on them. As for the subjects you can teach children, I don't believe they have to be so different from what you can teach adults. I would go even further. Instead of teaching children as if they were adults, teach adults as if they were children. I mean, don't be too serious. Don't overcomplicate it. Use plenty of concrete examples and of course, plenty of humor. In the world of today, everything has to be fast or instant. Fast food has been booming worldwide the last 30 years. The media has become social and instant. Information is everywhere and easily available 
and all this has had an impact on quality. What can karate do in this world? Karate is hardly something that can be instantly learned. I would argue the best way to attract people to our martial art is to convince parents and children to take it up as a hobby. There are a few good angles for this, like self-defense, sports and fitness, learning to stand up to bullies, etc. The next challenge is to try and keep students in your dojo as they grow up. The belt system helps to keep kids until they reach a certain level, but what then? What if the kid turns 16 or 18 and has their brown or black belt? In many cases they quit because they go off to college or university or because they feel they've learned all they wanted to learn. There is always more to learn of course and karate offers a great wealth of knowledge. It is up to the teacher to keep offering more knowledge in addition to guard the existing skills of the student. But true loyalty of a student can solely depend on the content of the lessons. The X factor that makes your students stay, or at least come back after their studies are over, is that the dojo is a place they can consider a home away from home. At least that's what made me stay. Next week we'll continue this discussion and talk about self-defense for children. I would love to hear what you guys have to say about this. Do you teach? How did you go from student to teacher status? How long have you been doing karate? What attracted you? What kept you? What's your opinion on children's karate? Leave a message down below and I'll try to answer it. For now, I wish you a great day. And as always, thanks for watching.